and share the word. I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Yes, I spoke on this a few, couple of few weeks ago, but I'm going to do something a little different. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. I'm going to read that from the... New Living Translation real quickly. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. That's a big deal for me. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. That's all I want to read this morning. I want to talk to you a little while from the subject matter of groundwork. 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 One of the things that I reflected on even this morning before I came here was I was actually looking at pictures that are on my refrigerator of my children as they were babies and as they were growing up. And I just reflected on the moment that I'm in right now, recognizing that who they were then should be a resemblance of who they are now, but it would all be based on the foundation. What you see in its early stages is not always what it ends up looking like. But as I reflected, I looked back on my parents, my mother and my father, and realized that there were times in our lives when we didn't understand what was going on in the way they were shaping and the way they were molding us and in their disciplinary uh, regimes and, and things that we in ourselves as children were not feeling like. We didn't feel right about it. Not anything negative, no abuse, anything of that nature. But we didn't understand the necessity of certain things in our lives. We didn't understand. We, we looked at certain things that happened as we were coming up as task and as too much. Like just simply just having to wake up and, and, and make your bed and, and, and having weeks that you do dishes and, and going out in the yard and, and doing full yard work and picking up branches and doing leaves and, and, and doing things that, that, that looked like at the time it was taking my fun away. It was taking our ability to just hang out and spend time because when you're young, you always just want to have fun. When you're young, you always just want to be in a situation where you can do what you want to do. It looks like in life that anytime there is an obligation when you are young, it's taking something away from you, not realizing that the things that were being given to you to do or the task that were being given to us to do was instilling or planting or putting something in us that would last us a lifetime and not only last us a lifetime but it would allow us to have something to be able to put into the next generation and to those who have followed us and and, and so as I look back at it I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I was blessed with both a father, a father and a mother in the home who were hard workers who were people who were not just people who were talking, but they were examples of people who put their, their nose in the grind and put their shoulders in there and their handiwork into the package. And we were able to observe it while we were doing. We were yet able to observing. And I look at my life now and I look at those around me now and I have a point for what I'm saying. And I look and understand how much it is of necessity that while the seed is being planted into the ground, that there is something that is done to make sure that it comes up right. But prior to it being planted, it is important of the ground, it is important to understand the significance of the ground that it is planted into. I want to start by talking to you about how God is the gardener of this, of this garden. And, and as Jesus begins to refer, he says, I'm the branch now, I'm the branch, but I'm not the one who did the planting. I'm not the one who laid the groundwork. I'm not the one who chose where I would be planted. And I want, this, I want you to know this about yourself, that God is extremely and has been and is intentional about your placement. 
God did not plant you into this earth in a haphazard way. He didn't put you here in a situation where he was not aware of all of the circumstances surrounding it. He, would, he did not put you here or plant you in. He did not allow a sperm to outswim all the other sperms and connect with an egg to place you in a situation that he was not aware of. So it doesn't really matter. It matters, but it doesn't matter what your birthing was like. All of the, all of the negativity or all of the adversity or all of the grandeur that came with it, it was all intentional by God. He selected your daddy. He selected your mama. He selected the environment. And he wouldn't trust them. Watch this. Trust what he had put together with this, with this seed if it was not able to. If it was not able to bring it into pass. And that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean then that your mama, stay with me now, your mother and your father would be those who groom you all along the way. It was the vehicle to bring you up into this world. And so, and so it is important that we not allow the enemy to slip in and to convince us that we were a mistake. It is important that we do not allow the enemy to infiltrate our mind and make us believe that somehow God was not on the job and God was not aware of the deficiencies that would be in our parents or those who brought us here into this earth realm. But he knew that in the inside and in the makeup of those individuals, there were things, whether it be your stature, whether it be the way you handle yourself, whether it be the giftings on the inside of you, they would be something that would be transferred through the DNA that would be usable for his purpose at this current moment. God was in his mind before the foundation of the world ensuring that when you got here you have what you need to survive. You have what you need not just to survive but you have what you need to succeed. You may not be the best of what you do but inside of you there is a gifting that was placed in you. Not just God intentionally did it but it was placed in you that has the ability to bring you beyond survival into success because God God's plan for us is to be successful, successful in his plan and in his purpose and in his way. And that is important that you understand that maybe the alcoholic was an alcoholic and maybe God, God forbid, but maybe you were abused by that alcoholic who is your father. But that alcoholic had vocal cords that were beyond other people and had giftings in them. And so God allowed you to come through someone who may have had adversity in the process, but it was because he was working something in your favor that if something has been planted on the inside of you intentionally by God that will allow you to succeed in fulfilling his divine purpose because that's why you are here. And that is also why they were chosen to fulfill this chapter or this phase or this component of it. And so you have to be very careful that as you gaze over your shoulder and look back and look, or look around you and you look at other people and sometimes become somewhat envious or jealous of their situation and how they were brought up and the, and the consistency they had in their home and, and the mother and father that, that was placed there and so on and so forth. Be careful that you don't forget that God intentionally placed you in this earth. Intentionally chose those who brought you here. Intentionally put you in their care for the right amount of time so that he could bring you into an environment that he knew you could prosper into. Sometimes in prosperity there is adversity and you go through things but it teaches you how to become someone that you wouldn't have known how to be. It teaches you who you don't want to be. It teaches, how, teaches you how you don't want to end up and in the process God uses it to bring us to this moment and so I want you to know that your ground is critical. And you have to learn how to recognize that in life, the ground itself is the way you're going to have to look at things. Even when you're going to look for a home or even when you're starting to do work or you want to be a real estate person or you're going to actually look. Most of the time, we, we are enamored by what looks good on the outside. We like the, the stained glass or we like, we like the structure or, or, or we, like, we like the way it's built or we, we like the, 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 the edifice itself, even the landscaping, not recognizing that if you move based on the external of what you see, 
and you never look at the ground or you never look at the foundation of which and in which this thing was built, then you won't recognize that the foundation is the critical, na- the critical piece that sustains what you see on the outside. I hope you don't miss what I'm saying, that your foundation is the critical piece that sustains what other people either applaud or they or either they degrade the foundation your ground has to be cultivated your ground has to be has to be dealt with and God said in this particular scripture he says I'm the gardener I planted you in an intentional place but I want you to know something for the things and the endeavors that you have in your life you're going to have to be the gardener You're going to have to become the one who recognizes when I got to dig up some dirt, when I got to do some things to the ground to prepare it for the seed that I'm about to put in it. I got to make sure that the ground is fertile enough that it can receive the proper nutrients that when I put my seed into it or when I put my idea into it or when I put my family into it, it has the ability and the full capability to grow because the ground is critical. It is necessary that when the seed goes in it has a place that even while it is hidden and even while it is unknown and even while it seems to be never going to amount to anything it is because it has been put into a place that the ground has been prepared that it has every right and every will to grow you grow because of your ground so that's the establishment I want to begin to to deal with you for the next few sessions that we get together to understand that the building is not about the look. The building is about its foundation. So, So we live in a world now where our feelings can get in the way of foundation. Now, Pastor Rod, what do you mean? We live in a world today where what we see with our natural eye what our emotions and our senses are able to grasp, it tends to draw us in. And we find ourselves looking at external beauty and external things that are temporary, that are going to change, just for the sake of you being, of you laughing at yourself. If you're over 50, has your body changed? Just, as, just for the sake of looking back at your old pictures and seeing what you look like then, and then look, oh, I know you're laughing on the screen with me. Uh, and, and looking at what you look now, by chance, has anything changed? Because, because, because it can start beautiful. It can start looking like it's all together because it has been primed and primed on the outside. But the outside of a thing does not evaluate what the real thing is. The outside of the thing can be glossed. It can be polished. It can be, it can be so refined that it looks like it's great, but it can be cheap. On the, on, the, on the inside. It can be fragile on the inside. It can be corrupt and dirty on the inside. And what the enemy would like to do and what we have to be careful to not do is to base our moves and base our understanding and base our direction on what we're seeing on the outside. We have to learn to look deeper and look at the foundation of the thing. Huh. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk to you about the relationships that look good. That both people looked, looked, E-D, looked good. And it started off just great because I was attracted to it and because it was absolutely beautiful. It said all the right things. He said the right thing. She said the right thing. She has this gape in her wall. He has this, 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 my, 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 my wife's word, this suave look about him. We had, it, it, everything about it was so perfect that it looked like I should date it and it looked like I should spend time with it and it looked like maybe I should kiss it and it looked like maybe I should rub on it and it looked like maybe I should take it outside off so I can see what the inside it it looked like maybe I should have let it get into me and not knowing that on the inside of what was on the outside there was corruption and there was dirt and there was bigotry and there was there was there was there was, there was, there was lies and and, and and deceit not knowing all of that and now there's a birth that has done happen and you look back over your shoulder and say Lord why didn't I see it why didn't I see that he was just lying why didn't I see that she was just after my money why didn't I see that this was temporary that I was just one in a number it is because we have the tendency to find ourselves being not like God and looking at the outward appearance instead of looking at the inward appearance and starting studying the dirt that the thing came from. Now, now, 
So, so I want to, I want to, I want to begin to show you how it is important now to become more foundational and to begin to look at, look at the bottom. Then when, when Jesus began to talk here, he said, look here, he planted you in the ground that he meant to. And here's the most important thing about it. He rooted you there. Your roots are the significant part of you. Your roots, and here's the deal, believer, here's the deal, a, a, a person here, or, or whoever I'm talking to, you have some responsibilities for your roots. You have some responsibility. Here's where we're struggling at this moment. We are now being challenged to see how deep our roots really are, how strong they really are. What have we done to secure us in a ground that would start quaking, that a ground that would start shaking? What have we put into us? Have we allowed the word to come into us? Have we allowed good teaching to come into us? Have we allowed good advice to get into us that would establish us in such a way that when the roots start to be shaken and the roots start to be pushed that we can still stay strong and still produce fruit. We are living in a moment right now where we're being shaken from the very foundation and if your foundation is not sure you are surely going to fail. So I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to spend a lot of time today, today making you feel happy. I want to talk about the materials in the foundation that you have. How much time do you really spend in the word of God? How much time do you deposit or allow the word to absorb itself and to begin to feed your roots? Because you're asking for a blessing on the outside. You're asking for fruit on the top. But there is no water. There's no nourishment. There's no food being saved to the root and so here while I'm looking for a blessing on the outside I don't want temporary blessings I want things that will remain and remain solid so I got to begin to feed my roots feed my foundation so your life will often resemble especially your resume will often resemble your foundation how many torn relationships have you been in how many lost opportunities have you seen go away? Not because, not because it may not have been good for you, but because you were not prepared for it. Or you were prepared for it, but you let something else lead you to something that's not good for you. And here's what we have to begin to do now. We have to begin to engage the opportunities in our lives by looking at them, not from their external beauty, not looking for how much money they will bring us, not looking for how many friends and how much prestige it will give us to begin to look at the foundation that if the core of this thing is not right, at the end of the day, it's going to produce something that is not right. And so so while it looks good, feels good, sounds good, and looks like the best move to make right now, what I'm learning is there was something wrong with the root. We often talk about in the word, or we often say, you know, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. And the tree is known by the fruit that it bears, but the tree can't bear a fruit that ain't in its root. So if you get the identification of the root, you're going to begin to recognize what the fruit's going to be like. And so we have the tendency to look at the apple and the peach and the orange and see how much it appeals to the eye, Eve, how much it appeals to my desires, Eve, how much it appears to what I really want, Eve, and we refuse to look at what's the root of it. How did I get here? What was said to me that led me out of the will of God? Well, what happened in my life that caused me to be so fragile that I became so weak that I would enter into something and look at something that was shiny on the outside and not recognize? recognize how dirty it was on the inside and here I am right now in the middle of a mess because I was fruit inspecting and not root inspecting so to know that God planted you on purpose is one thing but to recognize that he planted you in a place where now your roots have to begin to grow and you are a contributor to your growth by, re by understanding that you have to feed your roots to produce. You have to feed them. You have to place them in the right environment. You have to understand that God has planted a treasure in you. It is an, earth, an, an earthen vessel with a treasure. And he has invested that into you. And what he invested into you, he sent into this world. And he allowed you to be in an environment that could groom what's there. But we are so busy allowing other people to feed our roots that we become so that we can become like them and look like them and act like them and be as popular as them and have the goods in them instead of cultivating our roots our 
ourselves. What happened to hard work? What happened to real practice? What happened to real study? What happened to me investing time in myself, to knowing where my weaknesses are, knowing what I don't do well, and beginning to feed my roots with information and with resources? Yes, prayer. Yes, the word. But to invest in my roots so that my fruit becomes something that not just is visible and not just exciting, but my fruit is anointed. My fruit is yoke destroyed. My, youth, my fruit can change in environment my fruit can produce no other fruit and that fruit itself can come after me and constantly produce because I've trained my roots to produce good fruit so so oh I know I'm I'm not exciting you I didn't mean to excite you today I mean to tell you in no uncertain terms your ground speaks yeah your ground speaks your plant looks good, but your ground talks. What happened when Cain slayed Abel? The Bible says that God said, well, here's what I'm hearing. I'm not hearing what happened. I'm not hearing the incident. I was there anyway. I saw it all. I'm not hearing what you're telling me. What I hear is the voice that is coming from the ground. What I hear is the voice that the ground is speaking to me, that the blood has been said. I hear the voice coming from the ground. Your ground speaks. Who are you hanging with? Your ground speaks. Who's in your world? Your ground speaks. Who are you giving your time to that should not have it? Your ground speaks. It'll begin to show because your spots will begin to come out when you begin to deal with dirty stuff. It'll begin to show what's in the foundation of your ground. How many people are you tolerating so that you can be accepted? How many people are you dealing with that cannot contribute to your ground? Yes, they look good and they're not bad people. They've never done you wrong, but is there a contribution to my ground? Because if you're not contributing to my ground I'm gonna have to allow you to move but here's what happens when I won't make the decision here's what happens when my pleasures and my emotions get in the way here's what happens when I'm doing stuff that prohibits what God's willing for me he says you're producing fruit and your fruit is okay but here's what I want you to understand if you don't cut it I will Jesus said to his disciples he said every tree that bears fruit that does not bear fruit, my father takes it away. Then he says, those that bear fruit, he says, he prunes them. He cuts them back. Now, this is absolutely awesome to me. He doesn't remove the tree. He removes the fruit that was productive. He cuts me back but he cuts me back in the same place. Some people cannot, we, many of us, cannot interpret this, this, this understanding. He said, because our first thought is when it's not happening for us, move. When it's not working, oh, I don't like it, move. But what he said was, I'm not going to move you, I'm going to cut you right there. I'm going to cut you back, even though you've been productive, I'm going to cut you back right there. Because it's not about the ground you're in. It's about, I know you can produce more than you have, and you've become satisfied. Let me say this like God gave it to me. Let me say this word, just like, when God is not satisfied because you have become satisfied on that level. I want to say it again. When God is not satisfied because you have become satisfied on that level. He said this level is too low, but because it has produced to your current expectations, you think it's okay, but I'm not satisfied. So here's what I'll do. I'll rock your world. I'll cut from you what you didn't think was going to be cut from you. I will remove things. I will allow adversity to come up. I will allow disagreements to come up, but I will cut you back without moving you, without letting you go. You want to get out but you can't find no place you want to move to a different location but it is not working out you want to get away but it won't happen because if I'm locking you in that spot because in that spot is your maximum productivity but because you have become satisfied and stopped working to make yourself better here's the cut I want to say this to you everybody in your life won't make the cut All throughout your life. Oh, how many times have you been in love? 
and it didn't end up right. Oh, I fell in love when I was in third grade. Oh, God, when I got to seventh grade and they had grown new stuff, I sure fell in love then. So I got a little older and went to college. I discovered there's something way bigger than Waycross, and I fell in love again. You first fall in love and fall in love because you fall in love with the spot. But, but what you don't understand, if God says, if this is not the connection, if this is not the fertilizer that feeds your, product, your productivity and your purpose, I don't care how much you love it, I'm not going to let it happen. I'm not going to let, I'll continue to cut you. And yes, you might be lonely. And yes, you might be by yourself. And yes, it might not feel too good. And yes, it feels like I can't make it by myself. And yes, you a baby mama full time. And yes, all of those things. He said, but I'm going to Cut it back because I want full productivity. I can't let you be satisfied in a place that could produce more for you. And this is when we tend to give up and leave God when all of a sudden God starts cutting us back. And the first thing we typically do when that happens is look for blame. They ain't like this. Shoot, uh-uh. uh-uh. They, 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 I'm mad. Shoot, they, 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 they jealous of me. I want you to understand something. You can use all of them you want, and they may be true, but they are God intended because he's not going to let you be. He is not satisfied when you become satisfied on a level that is beneath you. How much work are you putting in? Has it become easy now? Have you decided now that you got it so you don't have to pray as much, so you don't have to study as much, so you don't have to rehearse as much, so you don't have to do as much because now people are excited about what you do and you have allowed the applause to give you the strength to take a vacation. But the applause will put you in a situation where the vacation will become a staycation because Because you can't get back from where you went. Be careful as you start sliding back when things start going up in your life. As you start pursuing more things, be careful that you don't let the things that was in your foundation, the things that started you, how you really would pray, how you really would fast, how you really would get into the Word. And you will seek counsel before you made moves. You will seek understanding before you made moves. Because you always wanted to be in the will of God. But now that you are elevated, and now that you have more, and now that it seems like things are, are looking good, and other people want you, now you don't consult God. He says, but I'm not satisfied there. So since you have decided that you're going to choose something that ain't like me, I'll cut you right here. So, so, now when God cuts, he cuts without permission. He don't consult you. He don't show you in a dream. And he ain't got to send a prophet. He just starts cutting. And he started cutting, and sometimes you don't know he's cutting. Just little leaves falling. But he's cutting you back because he's going to cut you to the quick. He's going to cut you to a place where now you look like you are unattractive. Can I teach this good? You look unattractive. You look like nobody wants to be a part of you because you don't have what you're used to. But what he's trying to show you is they were attracted to your fruit, not your root. And they are attracted to what you have. And when you lose what you have, they ain't going to want you no more. They're going to move on. They just wanted the, the possibility and the pieces of going on the inside of you. And once you have the baby, they're going to leave you where you at. And once you, once you have, the, once you lose what they thought they wanted once you gain a little weight they're gonna lose what they're gonna leave you right where you are when you don't look like what started when the finished product starts to look a little different people will walk off from you and it ain't them walking it is God blowing he said I'll change your whole stature I'll change your whole physique to get the dirt away from you and then we spend our lives trying to trying to do diets To get back to who I was when God said, I don't want who you were. I have something bigger and I have something. Oh, this 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 ain't this ain't a quarantine kind of message. This ain't a shelter in place kind of message. This message, Pastor Rod, you are not coming to. I am encouraging you like you right where you are. I'm telling you that sometimes these cuts that we are experiencing are part of the cutting back that is necessary because God says you can produce more, but you can't produce more if you don't feed your root. Can't you remember when you first got saved? Oh, yeah, 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 I know some of us can. Could keep you away from church. Now, anything can keep you away from church. Can't you remember how you set aside a devotional time and you would spend time with the Lord or you would spend time studying or or at least preparing? Now, a few dirty dishes will get you away because you got to get this cleaned up so you stay dirty. Can't you remember the times where your priority said, Father, I'll seek you first 
and I'll seek your kingdom. And whatever you add, I'll receive. And whatever you take away, it's fine. Can't you remember those times? But now you're out in the grocery store trying to add to yourself without God. Picking and choosing. Searching out. Not recognizing that God's timing is everything. And when he cuts you, when he puts the blade on you, then he says to you, I'm going to take this away. I'm not just going to take it away. I'm going to burn it up. I'm going to make sure you don't get this back. I'm going to make sure because you can produce right where you are if you stop seeing yourself as limited. If you start seeing yourself as an abundant blessing because he has planted into you. He is an investment. And you don't have to diminish your value to make somebody else happy. You don't have to diminish who you are and change, how, change your values and change how you structure and change after you go after this if they can't contain what God has put into you and they can't accept what God has put into you then they need to go and if you don't send them he'll send them for you so I will say it again when God is not satisfied because you're satisfied on that level things change I'm almost there so so Jesus said, now when he cuts you, recognize this. You are clean through the word I've already spoken to you. In other words, I have sent laxatives into you to clean your body out. All along the way, I've been dropping nuggets. I've been giving you wisdom. I've been giving you knowledge. I've been giving you understanding. I've been showing you things. Listen, there's a call on your life. Listen, there's an anointing on your life. Listen, you may be a prophet of God. Listen, you may be a pastor or you may be a teacher or you may just be an evangelist. Now, I don't want to say just. You may be an evangelist. You might be a street evangelist. You might be someone who no one ever knows except for the people who's the most dirty. And that is maybe sometimes not popular to you. He said, but that's who I called you and that's how I planted you. And that's how I want you. And because of that, I'm not going to allow you to be elevated above your call. You want to go into a world that is bigger than you. But I called you to stand on the corner and to stand in the streets and stand in the highway and declare that Jesus is Lord. And it may not always be from your mouth. It may be from your lifestyle. It may be from the fact that he delivered you from drugs. He delivered you from sexual promiscuity. He delivered you from things that people don't even know about. And now you can stand free and your freedom represents somebody else to draw that they are attracted to the fact that you're free and they want to know and he says so I'll cut away everything that will promote you bigger than where I want you this ain't this ain't that message that you're finna be lavished with 9,000 blessings and everything gonna come to you at your hand. This is the message for, the, for those other people, that, that middle class, that working class, that blue class people who understand hard work, hard work. And I don't mean just somewhere out there hoeing in the grass. And I don't I mean just something washing. And I'm talking about hard work. The hard work of going on when you don't feel like it. The hard work of feeling received when you're feeling rejected. The hard work of recognizing you're being accepted when on the outside and all of your emotions are becoming depressed because nobody seems to care. The hard work of being isolated when God sometimes will isolate you and won't let you have the friends you have and won't let you go where you used to go and put you in situations where it feels like you're an outcast, that you're the black sheep. The hard work of pressing through the hard time, the hard work that Paul, that Paul said, is but light affliction compared to the glory. But sometimes the adversity that you've gone through is the hard work necessary for advancement. He says, so I'm cleaning you through cutbacks. You ain't going to be able to do what you used to do. Huh. Anybody ever had any sleepless nights? Sleepless nights because things just ain't sitting right. They don't feel right. And you wonder why somebody doing you like this? Or you wonder why, man, I don't feel the same way about dude no more, man. I can't even roll like that no more. Man, we used to holler, we used to, you know, run, do our thing or whatever. But something, something done changed, bro. Something done changed. Let me tell you what's changed. The education. When you begin to feed yourself and you begin to allow God to absorb the word into you, he'll begin to filtrate you and he'll create a filter on the outside of you that will make others not want to be with you and if it doesn't it'll make you feel like there's something different and you'll watch people fade away and you'll watch people fall away and something on the inside may long for them to come back and long to be close again
again to remember the old time. You know how we are. We always calling somebody to talk about the old time. We always calling somebody to remember how we were in high school and remember when we did this and remember when we did that. And we just laugh and we just play and we just doing whatever. And I'm not saying that I don't do the same thing and reminisce. But at the same time, those days are gone. And sometimes you have to decide those days are gone. Mm hmm. Yep, that dispensation is gone in my life. That age is gone in my life. I can't play them same old game. I got responsibilities. I got children. I got a job. I got a life. I got a calling on my life that I must be dedicated to. I got a calling that's going to draw people to the spirit, to, to, to the presence of God. And so I have to now, as hard as it is, begin to cut myself off and begin to isolate myself and put myself in a, a situation where I'm training for what I'm supposed to do. Not that I'm better than anybody else. Not that I think I'm stronger than anybody else. Not that I don't like other people, but I'm in training. I'm in basic training. I'm in a situation where my family can't come in. I'm in a situation where all this foolishness can't come in. I got to begin to shut out some things so that I can focus on where he's really taking me so that I don't miss the target because I'm too late in my life. I'm too late in my purpose to miss the target now. I can't keep shooting and missing and hitting side. I got to hit it right in the heart. I got to hit it in the bullseye. And right now I'm distracted because there's too much of my peripheral vision. So I got to move some things out of the way so that I can be on point for the one who called me so he says you are clean that is a progressive cleaning I'm almost done I know it looked like on Mother's Day I came and brought a strap with me but it's anointed <laughs> now I got to be willing to look at what I'm putting in my ground okay okay let me do a friend list I got to do a friend checklist now. Mm. Oh, they go to the club more than they go to church. Mm. Now, I'm clean. I don't cuss, but they cuss all the time. Mm. Friend list. Something about them ain't right. They don't ever give. Doing a friend list. Oh, they hang with this, and they hang with that. And it's not as anything wrong with them, this, or that. But that's not who I am and who I want to be. Because I got to recognize that there's spirits attached to stuff. I got to recognize that there's stuff that comes with the things. The package comes inside of a bag. And the bag sometimes is contaminated. So what's carrying it is going to hurt me. So what I got to do is I got to get away from the thing. Because if they're going to bring this bag, if this is the only way I can get the package, then I don't want this package. This package is attractive, but I don't want it. Because I got to touch something that ain't good enough, that ain't ready for where I'm trying to go. And so I got to change my friend list. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Not my fave. Not my personal. Not the one that I I thought would always be there. Lord, are you telling me that you're moving? No, he said, I tell you what, you ain't got to do nothing. Watch me do it. Watch me. Watch me cut it away. Watch you all of a sudden see your heart broken. You didn't see it coming. Watch you all of a sudden see yourself fall down. You didn't see it coming. And it looks like it would be the most painful thing. And you are praying that I would change it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not getting ready to change it. I'm not getting ready to reopen the door. I'm not getting, I'm not getting ready to do it because you are too valuable to this purpose. You have to recognize I intentionally made you valuable, and I'm not going to let anything else contaminate you. So I'm cutting. Whew. So now, as we close on this Mother's Day, the day where we celebrate mothers, and I, I love them all, I want you to recognize that you're being served notice, that God is in the business of cutting to clean. Yeah.